the idea jumped into my head, curiously enough, um, when I had a couple of young friends, mm -hmm. uh, the, the son and, and um, daughter-in-law of another writer, um, came to visit. And both of them had actually struggled with alcohol. Okay. And I was struck um, when I watched one of them do the scene which is at the very start of the book where uh, where Moth you know taps in from goes from 99 to 100 and I, I, I watched them do that and I thought gee that's interesting mm -hmm. um, because it creates a, a whole atmosphere um, of tension around a character and so I began to think of that and at the same time I was really you know caught up in notions of revenge you know we tend to think of revenge as a theme as singular you know, i'm going to do this because this wrong was done to me mm -hmm. and we don't anticipate um in what will then happen and that it can have a you know a, a not so much a roller coaster but it's like a, a you know, a stone rolling yeah. downhill. Yeah. It's going to pick up momentum. And that was what I wanted to bring to the, um, this book. Characters on a page who are vulnerable, you know, who have flaws, who have weaknesses, um, are more interesting for readers. Because you and I, we have our own flaws. And I think readers come and they to that and they say, yes, um, I know, you know, people who have these same kinds of problems, these same issues, um, and that it it attracts them um, um, to find out how these things are overcome. And the interesting thing writing um, El Estudiante, the dead student in, in English, um, is was for me was to create an atmosphere throughout the book where uh, everyone could slip and a number of things could be deadly. Not just a killer, you know, but other things. And that creates, a, you, know, you know, an added passion, I think, you know, for the whole thing. At least it did for me writing it. The, the thing that I found sort of delicious in writing um, this book um, was that the bad guy's reasons for what he did are not, you know, he's not wrong. Something, you know, something wrong was done to him from, by people who should have known better, who should have been empathetic and weren't. Um, his reaction to this is, of course, substantially greater than anyone imagined. But um, that creates for the writer um, a, a world of possibility. I was really aware that I had to do things that kept pushing characters mm -hmm. into ever more difficult circumstances. Um, and that would then, that would then create surprise, where the invention comes in, and is when you create characters, and they tend to take over, um, not just the story, um, but your whole uh, approach, and um, and I was. I once said um, that writing is like having, you know, you're in a room alone, but there's really a bunch of people there. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, you know, yeah. And that is, and really that is, um, if you think of all of the ghosts that surround you, um, um, that is what makes the story come alive. Because if you aren't, if you aren't friends with your characters, I, how could I expect you as a reader to be friends with them as well? Yeah. And that's 
troop of both the good guys and the bad guys. In terms of pacing, pacing in any um, thriller is of paramount importance. Um, if you don't have an, in, you know, what's the word I used earlier, instinctive sense about these things, you're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, the really the question becomes when you realize you've done enough mm -hmm. so that the and it's always looking at I try to always look at each page uh, of the book and every element of the story as what will this do to the reader mm -hmm. what will he or she think when they reach this page that will make them want to go to the next and so pacing becomes um, sort of, um, it, you know, it's like woven into the fabric of the story. Mm. The, the thing that makes um, this book, I think, was so much fun for me to write was that the good guys on the one hand and the bad guy on the other have the same foundation in sort of, if you will, moral correctness um, and you know everybody has their own flaws uh, and um, it is about when you write you, you you stir these things together and that's where your stories that's where the suspense comes that's where the tension comes you see this in society um, over and over and over again um, Questions of who is right and who is wrong. Yeah. It's never simple. You know, it's not black and white. It's not white. black and white. Yeah, and you know, uh, the, you know, even you go to, you know, you know, the people who 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 look for simple answers, you know, um, you know, uh, are the ones that are are the ones who are going to find that their answers are far more complicated. I think that people are will always be fascinated. Um, by darkness um, and that the I don't think there's any gonna, ever going to be less of a demand for that I guess it, to be a successful thriller writer you have to be aware of um, the kind of darkness that works within you and and everyone you know I don't think people are I don't think people are any different now than they were you know in centuries in the past the difference is that we now have what's available to us um, in terms of the media um, makes it seem more horrific. It continues um, in the world, you know, and it it we always have it with us, and um, I don't know that we'll ever not have it. And if you write the kinds of books that I do, really, what we're doing, what I do, is is try to understand where violence comes from um, and and that's, that's certainly in El Estudiante that's what I'm trying to to get at um, I haven't gotten all the answers yet I keep trying maybe when you come and interview me when I'm 13 more books you know 20 when I get to my 26th you know I'll have figured it out you know.